so right, we gotta make it mine. From downtown streets to the Carroll Creek view, there's something special here to feel it too. Good morning, Frederick, rise and shine. Girls of your day Good morning, Frederick, rise and shine See you so lively Gotta make it mine From downtown streets to the Carroll Creek view There's something special here, you feel it too Good morning, Frederick, rise and shine Guide the way with a big smile She brightens up your day Girls of your day Good morning, Fred, and rise and shine a city Hi, I'm Alexis from Whistlepunk Delicatessen and Market and I'm here in Brunswick with Danny and you're watching Good Morning, Frederick. Good morning, Frederick. Happy Halloween. Oh my God, I can't breathe in this thing. All right. I can't, I can't leave this on, but I just thought, happy Halloween, everybody. Good morning. It is Thursday, October 31st, and I'm your host, Danny Gurry. Whew, those masks are horrible. Do you remember those plastic masks when we were kids? You'd get all sweaty. I had one of those downstairs, too, but yeah, I don't know about Halloween. I love the idea of it. I just, I don't ever have the time to do anything fun, but a lot of you do. And I think it's awesome. We have some houses decorated in our neighborhood that are amazing. And um, yeah, they people go all out. I have some friends who absolutely adore Halloween. And uh, yeah, good morning, Sharon. We are going to talk to you in just a little bit. Let's give you the rundown of what is happening. Uh, we've got local news, weather, and sports with Bob Miller and Chris Michaels from WFMD's Morning News Express. And then we're going to talk about what is happening in Frederick. We have all the events. And then live, we are going to have Sharon Price, who is a grief counselor to help people get through the holidays, and Julie Maurer. Uh, all, children's author Ichiban Goes Hiking, which is available at the home of Everything Frederick starting today. Uh, and so she will be on as well. Don't forget, purchase your Good Morning Frederick merch. You can do that today. Hopefully, we have a great October proceed and uh, we'll be able to donate. We've got October left. Well, October is done today. If you can head over to the home of Everything Frederick sometime today and pick up your Good Morning Frederick merch, including those cute ornaments, you can get an ornament and a sticker pack for just $10, which means actually if you buy three of those, you can get one free uh, because if you spend $30 or more, you get a free ornament and sticker combo, which means you can get a T-shirt and a uh, magnet. That's, that'll be about $30. Um, or you can just come in and buy a couple of stickers and know that the proceeds go to help Frederick County kids have a good Christmas. Uh, please subscribe to YouTube. Ask a friend or two to subscribe. I want to welcome all of our new subscribers. And if you're wondering what this show is all about, it's just really all about you, Frederick. The people, the community, the happenings. And uh, we are shooting for 1,500 subscribers by January 1. So hopefully you can help me get there. I appreciate it. I can't believe somebody's trying to call me right now. But anyway, there we go. All right. Uh, subscribe to YouTube. Oh, and don't forget about the podcast. Got me distracted. If you're in the car and you just want to listen, you can find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeart, and other platforms. All right, let's go ahead and get this Halloween show started.
to thank our show sponsor. We help you move. My hair's all messed up from that mask. Um, we help you move. Whether you're moving across the street or somewhere around the country, Nicholas and his team of moving experts can make the process easy. We help you move is veteran owned and a supporter of the Frederick community. We help you move.com. All right. It's now time for Bob Miller and Chris Michaels from WFMD. No, yeah. Oh. Look at it. Ah! Spooky. I wanted I wanted Chris <laughs> to be the best looking guy here today. So there you go. Well, I'm I'm wearing the scariest mask out of all of you, my Halloween <laughs> mask. But this is a mask I wear all year round. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I was sitting there saying, hang on a second, I, I can turn this on. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trick-or-treating, masquerading still. I don't think there's any more of these left, a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. There you go. You can't breathe in these things, these masks. Hey, no. hey listen, guys, let, let me, let me, let me go ahead and show you what I dressed up as this year, okay? Hold on one second, okay? All right, look, look, well, it's a family show. <laughs> look, look, look. Here's what I dressed up as this year. <laughs> a Yankees fan. Okay. Oh, I thought I thought it was a I thought it was a Mets fan or a Jets fan. <laughs> no, a Yankees fan because uh, of losing the World Series to the Dodgers. Uh, so there you go. All yeah. right. I liked your I liked your mask, Danny. Yeah, that was my son's from, I don't even know how how long ago yeah. I thought, well, I should do something, but yeah. Well, there's an old Jerry Seinfeld um, uh, comedy bit where he's talking about when he went out and, and, you know, when we were kids, you had the little plastic mask with the little rubber band with the little metal thing that would always snap. And you had that little slit right there where your mouth, you were supposed to be able to breathe through it and there's no way you could, but... You, you would always stick your tongue through it. And of course you would cut your tongue because they were sharp as a razor. They were. All and you get all get a, sweaty. You get all yeah. sweaty in there. Only to get one of those little orange looking uh, peanuts. <laughs> you know? I like the circus peanuts. Did you? Okay. Well, and go to I Chris's house. I like candy because... corn too, though. So I don't know what that's. Oh, about. Danny. I oh, love candy corn. Oh, that's a debate we constantly have. I love on candy show. corn. Yeah. No, I love candy corn. It's wonderful. It's it wonderful. Is wonderful. Yes. And then, yeah. uh, you know, there was a story about that too, where, you know, they only made one batch of candy corn and when everybody throws it out, they go out and uh, check all the trash and rebag it. <laughs> but I, 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 eat, I love candy corn. I, I, so I, I can't I, have it because I, it's just nothing but pure sugar. I know. But, yeah. I know. Okay. Well, Bob, before I get to news real quick, we all know also you don't mind pineapple on your pizza. It's another debate that we always have. Do you also put candy corn on your pizza, too? Is that no. something you don't mind? No. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Unless all you right. notice. There. All right. There. Go ahead, Chris. I know I'm you gonna have hop, to hop off. I'm going to hop in, uh, hop onto news real quick. Uh, so no injuries were reported from a house fire in the Boundary Creek area on Wednesday afternoon. The Frederick County Fire and Rescue Services Division says units were dispatched just before 2 p.m. to the 6900 block of Palace Court for the fire. They found flames showing from the back deck of a single family home. A rapid intervention dispatch was called to the scenes, bringing in more firefighters. They uh, they had the fire out within 20 minutes. Officials say the fire started on the outside with minimal extension into the interior of the home. According to officials with the Division of Fire and Rescue Services, all occupants were able to escape safely. So that is great news. <clears throat> the Frederick man was arrested Tuesday at his apartment on Tanny Avenue, charged with numerous weapons and narcotic offenses. Police say Leonard Anthony Morris, 22, was taken into custody by the Frederick police and other agencies which were serving a search warrant at his home. The arrest follows an investigation by Detective Patrick Sp Spivak into Morris's alleged involvement in the distribution of drugs and illegal firearms activity according to Frederick police. And we actually had Jason, uh, Chief uh, Jason Lando on today, as we do every last Thursday of the month, to actually talk about that and other things. So if you head to WFMD.com, uh, it'll be up shortly, or our WFMD Facebook page will have that interview up shortly. Taking a quick look at uh, weather today, sunny to partly cloudy, uh, near record high temperatures, 83. 
And uh, tonight, partly cloudy skies uh, early. We'll give way to some cloudy skies, low of 64. And taking a look at tomorrow at your TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. A chance of morning showers, mostly cloudy early, then afternoon sunshine. Uh, high of 77, low of 42 tomorrow. And getting back to today, again, the trick-or-treaters shouldn't see any rain out there. If you're driving out and about in the neighborhoods, please, please, please be careful. There's a lot of little ones on the road. Make sure you keep them safe. Have fun. And any candy you don't want, feel free to deliver it over here to the WFMD radio station, as long as it's not candy corn. Have a great Halloween, everybody. All right. We'll see you later. Interesting to uh, note that uh, during the interview with Jason Lando, um, we mentioned the fact that Pittsburgh is losing their chief of police. Now, that was a big story not too long ago, about a year ago, where his name was being mentioned. Yeah, yeah, it was. Police. And I said, look, I, I, I'm not trying to get you a gotcha question, but here you go. And he's like, I was ready for you. And he said that he's had no contact. Nobody's reached out. He just built a house and he likes it here in Frederick. So he has no plans on going anywhere. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. That's a way bigger department. I would say way bigger headaches. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a bigger feather in your cap, probably a little bit more money than Frederick could pl- would pay. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. If, uh, Jason Lando hangs around. So. I think he's uh, waiting for that new uh, the police station that's right? being built. I mean, yeah, I think he doesn't he doesn't want to miss that, I'm sure. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, you you know, you're part of building that. You're part of the design team. Everything's kind of falling into place. You've got another, you know, uh, the mayor's hanging around for a little bit longer. So, you know, I would say that uh, uh, he, he's not done a horrible job. Um, and, I, you know, why would you leave? I mean, this is such yeah. a great area. Why would you leave to go to a big city problems? But. That's his hometown. That's where he goes when he goes away for the weekend. You know, he goes yep. he goes back home. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, uh, when he says he's no one has reached out. That's interesting. But yeah, well, I mean, you know, maybe that's uh, like the White House saying that uh, Biden didn't say anything about garbage supporters. So uh, yeah, we nothing to see there, folks. So um, uh, walking I, I, it back, walking yeah. it back. I'll tell you oh. it's what you got to do. All right. Well, last night you heard it. Uh, it was a, a great night. I don't know if I, hopefully this will work. We don't get, do we have double audio or anything? Do you hear echoes? Cause okay. I got the sound. Here's All the right. Dodgers beating the Yankees. No sound. That's not playing. There you go. The Dodgers have won the world series. Well, and there you go. Four that didn't, games that didn't come one. through. I don't know why that sound didn't come through because your other oh. sound always does. I don't know why either. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I had That's the right okay. buttons push, so it's, it's my fault. That's um, all right. So they took advantage of uh, three miscues to erase a five-run fifth-inning deficit. I was watching that. It was, it was amazing how that happened. It was probably one of the most memorable mid-game meltdowns in baseball history. And the Dodgers took advantage of that, then used an eighth-inning sack fly from Gavin Lux and Mookie Betts, they beat the Yankees. The Yankees lose. The Yankees lose seven to six and lose the World Series by a, a four to one uh, margin. Wizards beat the Atlanta Hawks yesterday, one thirty three to one twenty. Girls flag football. Urbana and Linganore, the b- battle of the unbeaten, went to Urbana Hawks seven to nothing. Middletown walked the dog on uh, Walkersville eighteen to zip. Uh, Genevieve Chase tossed three uh, touchdown strikes to three different receivers. Frederick over TJ, 20 to 6. Uh, and uh, Brunswick defeated Catoctin, 19 to 7. In uh, volleyball action yesterday, regional quarterfinals, Tuscarora over Oakdale. They'll take on the top seeded North Hagerstown Hubs next. Uh, Linganora will face either Manchester Valley or Westminster because they defeated South High, 3 to nothing. Urbana over TJ in 4A West 1 region action. They'll take on top seeded Frederick. And uh, congratulations, Claire Sun, uh, one of the youngest golfers in the field, shows she belonged in the uh, state golf tournament. She uh, did very well. She shot a seven over par 149 across two days and tied for fourth among the class 4A and 3A girls. She's the highest finishing Frederick Gal- County golfer across all divisions and uh, dropped 15 strokes from her total from last year. So congratulations. going Holy out there. cow. Right. Great. First of all, the fact that she, she shot what she did and she came. What was it? I mean, that's fourth. Nuts. Tied for fourth. 
Yeah. Yeah, the only way I can drop 15 shots is if I use a, an eraser. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I That's can't it. even do that in putt-putt, so I don't know. It's, yeah, uh, so great. really. Great. I love the uh, I love the background here the uh, the pumpkins yeah. and the bats and stuff. I don't I know who does all your graphics. Do you do bit those? Into the spirit, you know. Yeah, yeah. So well, what? Uh, so do you uh, do you dress up when you hand out the candy? Do you go outside? Do you just leave the candy out? I we do typically sit, especially because it's supposed to be nice. We'll sit at the end of the driveway because we have kind of a long driveway, so we'll sit down there and. And pass out candy for a while, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now we sit at the end. I put out a couple of chairs until the bugs get to be so bad that we go in, and then uh, and then we and then you got to remember to turn off all your lights because they'll right. still come banging. They'll right. still. I'm like, look, you can't I got even neighbors. Have like a, yeah, an office light on or anything. Yeah. <laughs> the neighbors are going. We're going to the movies. So <laughs> I'm like. I like oh my watching. Goodness. We got a lot of little kids. I mean, little kids, little tots, and that's what I like to see. The yeah. the, the ones who. The ones who drive around and I'm like, look, you guys can go to CVS and buy something. Go ahead. I, you know, but, <laughs> and then when we get too tired, I just leave it out. And then the, whoever comes first, they just grab it all. Of and course. that's fun. To, that's fun to watch the, uh, the, uh, the spirit of sharing. Among yeah, teenagers. yeah. We need to set up a camera for that and see yeah. uh, who, who we can catch. But yeah, that'll be good. Well, enjoy, enjoy the time. Enjoy handing out candy. I like the one for me, one for you rule, so right. I might be doing that, but, you know. One for you, two for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got yeah. it. It's moderation. Everything right? in moderation. Yep. We're still Rocktober, man. We'll get it. Uh, we'll hand it out. Oh, I got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Enjoy. I will talk Thank to you, you guys later. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to talk about what's happening in Frederick and then Sharon Price is going to be live with us. And after that, we've got Julie Maurer, who is a local children's author. It's all coming up right after this. Real estate goddess, yeah. She's the one to get you there. Homes and dreams of And that lovely. All right. Now let's talk about what is happening in Frederick. Happening in Frederick is sponsored by Taco Bar. It is Berea Thursday at Taco Bar. They are located at West Point Plaza on Route 40. They are kind of right between 40 and alternate 40 in that little shopping center. Berea's slow-cooked shredded beef served in a variety of ways. The most common one is on tacos with melted cheese and paired with consomme, which is the beef broth made from the same juices. We off, uh, they, they offer burrilla tacos, queso burrilla, pizza burrilla, torta burrilla, burrilla fries, and more. Remember, at Taco Bar, this special is only available on Thursdays. Head over there today and get yourself some delicious burrilla. Tacobar1.com. Uh, if you want to, oh, poo, I did not upload the right thing here. 
All right. All right. Let's, uh, all right, here we go. We got it. All right. Today is Thursday, October 31st. And remember, just go to promocircus.com. Click on the events calendar uh, under Everything Frederick Live. Today, you have the free microchip clinic. Today is the last day for that. It was through October. Microchip ends today. And I think I put that on tomorrow, but we're going to ignore that. Uh, you want to go head to the home of Everything Frederick, 401 North Market Street at 11 and pick up your Good Morning Frederick merch so that I can give back to Christmas Cash for Kids, okay? And tonight, 7 to 9, karaoke at Tropics Pots Cuisines Bar and Grill, which is right on Prospect Boulevard. Uh, they do karaoke uh, tonight. And, of course, it is Halloween, so enjoy the trick-or-treaters if you get a lot in your neighborhood. Uh, I know we have quite a few, not as many as uh, across our development. So our development is cut down the middle by Rosemont Avenue and the development on the, the left side, which is the south side of Rosemont, uh, gets way more people than over here at the quiet side. But uh, we do have a lot of, well, we have a significant number of people that hand out candy. All right, tomorrow, we're going to ignore that Frederick County animal control thing. We got sensory friendly story time at Middletown Public Library. We have movie night, a local filmmaker screening at the Frederick Arts Council. That is tomorrow. Then on Saturday, uh, more and more events just keep getting added, it seems. So you're going to want to go to the calendar uh, to see all the great stuff happening. Uh, things will start to slow down very soon. I'm already noticing it. So get out while we can. It is first Saturday this Saturday, so enjoy downtown Frederick. Uh, you can head over to Roy Rogers. Their new look celebration goes on from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is the one on Route 40. They have pony rides, face painting, raffles, and more. And I think the first 10 people in the store at 10 a.m. get a $25 gift card. So not bad. You can head over to Roy Rogers on Route 40. Uh, noon to 2, stop down at the home of everything, Frederick. There'll be a lot of great stuff going on there. Again, you can pick up your merch. This will go toward our November total, which is just as important. And uh, you can uh, pick that up then for first Saturday. Also noon to 2, stop down on the creek. Uh, WFRE is at South Mountain Creamery. If you haven't had that ice cream there, my gosh, so good. And I do believe uh, the last time I was there, I didn't even know this, they have like uh, light fair foods. I think even like pizza and stuff like that. So I wasn't even aware of that uh, before. Uh, then you're just going to scooch right over to the creek from there uh, on the um, other side of the creek, obviously, heading down. Uh, it is the Acton Children's Business Fair. It is happening all along Carroll Creek. There are about 70 young people who are displaying their businesses that day. And um, they're, you know, I love this. I love young entrepreneurs. You're going to be able to see what some of our young people have, uh, have decided uh, to start. And I love that. And then one to four. The STEM Carnival is happening right where the Carroll Creek Amphitheater is, where Live at Five happens. Um, you can head over there because it's all free. There are games and stuff for the kids to play. And I know uh, Chris from WFMD will be there. Chris Michaels will be on site uh, doing some announcing and uh, having a good time there. And then uh, Saturday night, we set our clocks back one hour we're falling back. I'm telling you these one hour, I think this is the last time we do it, right? I think when we switch back to daylight savings, that it stays forever, I think. I, I'm not sure, but we'll know more in the spring, I guess. All right. On Sunday, if you've ever thought, hey, I'd love to do Forged in Fire, well, you got to check out the William F. Moran Bladesmith and Artisan Academy 
Now they have a beginner bladesmithing class uh, this Sunday, but they have others as well. Uh, you can check out the autumn excursion train ride on Walkersville Southern Railroad. Or how about letting your kids hang out with some of the flying cows? That's happening from 11 to 12 at Crestwood Middle. And then uh, Freddie Long is live at Monocacy Brewing. He's great, great performer. And uh, you enjoy Monocacy Brewing then. And then uh, coming up uh, for future, next Wednesday is our Cocktails and Conversations Networking at the Home of Everything Frederick. It is more cocktails and conversations than networking in a sense that it's usually a small group, about 15 to 20 people. I love it though. I get to meet new people every single time and um, I, it's just really a lot of fun. I've met some great people at those events. And then the eighth, uh, is next Friday, five to eight. It is Frederick at night. The merchants stay open late. A lot of them have goodies. Um, and the light walk is lit up and ready for you. If you don't remember those installations, you can head to downtown Frederick partnership. There are disco balls in the stairwells uh, of some of the, uh, the parking garage. There's light fixtures in some of the alleyways. It's pretty cool. I'd love to see that grow, actually. And then November 9th, which is uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, there's a very cool event. It is the second annual Roper Romp and Calf Dan Crawl. Mrs. Roper, do you remember her from Three's Company, used to wear those moo-moos, as I call them, caftans. And uh, from 2 to 7.30, you are going to see in downtown Frederick next Saturday uh, a bunch of people dressed that way. Uh, there is no fee to attend, but they are collecting donations for Hartley House, and uh, we love that. And it's a bar crawl, so be ready if you're out in downtown next Saturday. Uh, you can head to Hood College for the nonprofit board fair. The, there will be, I think, over 20 nonprofits on display who are looking for board members and uh, volunteers. And then 6 to 8 p.m., it's the third annual Harlem Wizards at FCC playing Team Frederick, which is a team made up of local principals, um, other, uh, I think the uh, ch chief of police, the mayor, perhaps, I believe the county uh, executive is playing. It's really a lot of fun. It's great entertainment and the proceeds benefit Boys and Girls Club of Frederick County, City Youth Matrix, and the I-9 Sports Foundation. So all for a great cause. Again, you get something fun and local organizations benefit. That's what I like. And then coming up on the 16th, there will be a lot more information about this, but the uh, Stuff a Truck, WFRD's FRE's food drive to uh, get people food for the holidays starts on the 16th. There will also be a lot of Toys for Tots uh, opportunities that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, if you can donate a uh, new toy, uh, that would be awesome. And on November 20th, um, actually, I should share my screen for this. I would love for you guys, if you want to, to attend, if you've been thinking about uh, riding the double-decker, uh, let me pull this up here. I'd love for you to join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let me just share my screen here. Uh, and we're going to get going here. All right, here we, let's see. All right. You can get an exclusive preview of the Merry and Bright Holiday Lights Experience. Now there will be some media posts coming out next week about this. Just $25. Basically, uh, the way that it works is 5 to 6.15, we're going to be pre-gaming at the home of everything. Frederick will have food and drinks for you. Then we take our cooler on board the, the bus. And for 45 minutes, we ride around. We check out the lights. that Downtown Frederick will be all lit up. I think it's going to be great. We stop at Ben's Town for about half hour. And then we head back to the home of everything Frederick at 8 o'clock. 
early enough night for you so you can get your beauty rest before work the next day. It was a ton of fun last time. If you want your tickets, just go to promocircus.com and click on the events calendar under Everything Frederick Live. And at the bottom below that calendar, you will see the uh, link to either purchase your tickets directly or you can Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. We have 40 seats available. We'd love for you to come on board. It was a great time last time, and I know it's going to be a great time this time. So join us for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. If you have an event you want included on in the calendar, let me know. Uh, you can email it to everythingfredericlive at gmail.com. All right. Now we are going to bring on author Sharon Price, who is a grief counselor. Let's see if she is here. She's not here yet. I don't see her. Sharon, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't see you. So I'm not sure what's happening with my camera. Oh, wait, Let me let's look. see here. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I don't know if uh, your webcam isn't uh, on or it's all good. Okay. It tells me to stop my cam. All right. Um, good morning, Danny. <laughs> Sorry good about the, uh, the computer glitch here. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good. Um, so you are a grief counselor. You have a couple of events coming up. Why don't we uh, first talk a little bit about uh, those events, and then we can talk about with the holidays coming up, um, yeah, how how people can deal with that. Yeah, I have an outreach program that I do during the holidays and a, and a couple others during the year, um, but this is called Coping with Grief During the Holidays. Um, and being a grief specialist uh, for 20 years now, I've worked with people not only for the loss of a loved one, but they may be distant or have someone in the military or off at college or be away from them during the holidays. So people have a tendency not to celebrate something that is, you know, brings back a lot of great memories too. Um, so in these presentations, we go through uh, tools, techniques, self-care, uh, but other things and ideas, suggestions that they can use to help them uh, process their grief, but also get through the grief. We also go through the myths of grief. There's a lot of things that have been told to people and passed down through generations that simply are not true and they keep people stuck and they're not able to move forward. Mm. Um, a lot of people that talk to me say, you know, I, 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 people tell me to move forward, but I don't know how or you can't. And actually you you do in life, whether we acknowledge it or not, um, it's just how we process the grief as we go through. Grief is always going to be part of our lives when we miss somebody. Um, but there's a way to have you know coping mechanisms and a way to bring joy back in your life. Um, so we wanna be able to bring those tools um, to the community and to the people here um, that need them and yeah. um, you know are searching for them. Yeah. What, I mean, if you can like even give people maybe one thing that during the holidays they can focus on uh, to help them kind of get through. I always tell people to focus on themselves. Like you just talked about the toys for tots. Um, and I've worked uh, primarily for many years with mothers that lost children. Um, and it is a very tough thing for people to uh, go through. Mm. And um, one of the myths around that is people have told uh, others that have lost children that they can't go on with their lives, that simply we're not supposed to uh, outlive our children. And, and that's simply not a true statement. I mean, that's a myth. And, and if I can reach every parent that lost a child to hear that, you know, your life is important, um, and there's other people here that love you um, and your life is not supposed to lose its purpose. Um, it is very tough when people lose a child. And a lot of times in those moments of loss and through the years, they come up with programs and other things that never would have been developed without that loss. So so the loss is not, you know, in vain and, and it's, it causes a lot of times a chain reaction within someone that creates a whole new purpose. I worked with an organization called Catherine's Cause um, in Westminster um, that lost their daughter to a drunk driver. Um, she got hit on the road and they started a court appointed program that helped save lives. 
Mm. So the people that were appointed, you know, got help that they needed to be able to deal with, uh, you know, whatever escape they were using for their own losses and their own pain. Um, but the program, uh, you know, helps people. And what I was getting at with that is sometimes when we donate, um, you know, in honor of our loved one that we lost in some way, whether that's a cause or you give, you know, a toy because, you know, you did lose a child and you give it, and you know, in their honor. Um, there's a lot of ways that we help ourselves heal our hearts. Um, and these are just some of the ways. So uh, we have two events coming up that are for the community. One is a virtual event that will be next Wednesday. Um, that is at seven o'clock. You can sign up on uh, my website. Um, and then we have one coming up in December that is actually for veterans and their families and also uh, first responders. And that is being sponsored by uh, Pulling for Veterans. And that's going to be held over at Taney Avenue at the FSK Post 11. Um, and people can actually sign up for the live event if, you know, if they want, uh, you know, the community to come in person um, yeah. by texting uh, that organization. And the text number for that is 240-285-4487. But both of these will be on, on the site, but also I go out to private organizations, whether that's a senior living home or uh, a hospital or a community center or anywhere where an organization reaches out and asks to have this event. Um, it typically takes an hour between the, the presentation and actually speaking um, to the audience and, and allowing them to ask questions. But it always brings a lot of people this time of year uh, because people have a tendency to not, like I said, not want to celebrate um, because of their loss. And, you know, if I were gone and I know I've spoken to other family members before uh, they left here and, and that I've lost, uh, they don't want you to stop living life. They don't want you to stop having joy and celebrating. And yeah. we honor the loved ones when we do celebrate them and we share something about them, whether that's a favorite meal or, you know, a, a, a memory about them. It keeps the memory alive. It brings them forward with you. Um, yeah. So I hope that, you know, if someone is hurting, that they reach out not only to myself, but there's other great resources in the community. Um, there's always a place to turn if you're feeling, um, you know, that you need to talk to somebody. Um, and you're going through pain and you're experiencing, you know, a loss um, or any kind of emotional pain. Um, I, it's just my, you know, I, the reason I do this is to encourage people if it's not, you know, through my organization um, and benefiting, you know, from going to one of the outreach programs that you reach out to someone um, yes. because you always someone to help. Yes, for sure. And if it's in, if you're in crisis, please know there is the 24 hour mental health uh, department over on, um, uh, what is it? Um, Mo not Montrose. What the heck is it? Montevue, Montevue lane. Uh, they're open 24 hours and they can get you immediate help and, you know, help you to do that. But if you're not in crisis mode and you're just trying to get yourself through the holidays, um, please reach out. I've posted the event in November. That's next week on the calendar. So you guys know how to get to that through promocircus.com. Click on everything Frederick Live and then the calendar of events is right there. You can get the details there. The Pulling for Veterans sponsored event uh, at the Legion. I will make sure that that is up as well. And I know you can always email outreach at pullingforveterans.org if you want more information and to reserve a space, but it's so important for people to, uh, you know, get the help that they need and, um, you know, try to use those tools to get through what I know is probably a tough time. So. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. And that, and, and thank you for having us on this morning, uh, you know, and, and talking about this because it is important. Sometimes people think that it makes them weak by asking for help, but it actually makes you stronger. It um, sure does. Yeah. yeah, we're designed to be with other people and have that support and help. And we all need it at some point in our life. So, um, right. And if, if there's somebody in your family who you feel like is, you know, needs the help too, maybe, you know, sign up uh, for the virtual and see if they will, you know, sit with you on that or come if you're a veteran or service member or first responder. Uh, come to the event on, uh, in December together 
And, um, you know, maybe through that you can help uh, reach them uh, and give them the tools that they may need. So good idea. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Sharon, we thank you so much for your time today. We're going to talk to you again soon before the December event, uh, just to remind people about that one. And we'll make sure and get the information out. But currently your link uh, to your website for the virtual uh, one is for November 5th at 7 p.m. It's in our calendar now. And if you guys have any questions, of course, you can message or reach out to me or Sharon Price as well. Uh, she'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Danny. And can I make a correction there? It's actually Wednesday the 6th. Or Wednesday the 6th. Sorry. Wednesday yep. the 6th. All right. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Have a great day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. I want to thank her for that. Look, very important. Uh, I, I, you know, everyone who has suffered a loss. Maybe this is a first holiday without your loved one. We know that can be tough. And if you're struggling, there is no shame in that at all. Uh, in fact, she is correct. You are stronger when you ask for support. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Then we're going to be back with author Julie Maurer. Uh, and uh, we'll chat with her about her new children's book right after this. This portion of Good Morning Frederick is powered by Ken's Automotive and Transmissions, Total Car Care. Need an oil change or brakes? Ken's Automotive and Transmissions can take care of that. How about exhaust or engine work? Ken's Automotive and Transmissions can do that too. No matter what you need for your car, Ken's Automotive and Transmissions is Total Car Care. Go to kenstrans.com to schedule an appointment today. Cosmec Healing handcrafted small batch tinctures and transdermal salves, double third party tested for quality you can trust. If you've got pain, headaches, or anxiety, our products are here to help you find relief. Patient over profits mindset, because we're patients too. Cosmechealing.com. Dream Free Art, Frederick's first and only splatter room. New location, new beginner friendly artful shenanigans for all ages. Come fling paint and make a masterpiece in Dream Free Art Splatter Room or join us for a fun and unique art experience. Book your next birthday party, corporate event, date night, or family outing at dreamfreeart.com to unleash your inner artist today. Dream Free Art. Free your creativity. Ah, uh, yes. And ANS Construction, a local and award-winning woman and minority-owned business. They are right here in Frederick. ANS Construction specialize in roofing, siding. They also do your windows and gutters and can even build you a new patio or deck or maybe fix one you already have. Give Sandra a call today, 301-703-2157 or email info at ansconstruction.net. Remember, because you watch Good Morning Frederick, you can get $750 off any roof or siding replacement or $50 off any roof repairs. When you call, just let her know that you saw her on Good Morning Frederick. Here are the details again, 301-703-2157 or info at ansconstruction.net. All right. Oh, let's get that off. All right. Uh, let's talk about who is making our market great. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, here we go. Market Makers is sponsored by Antietam World Travel Service. Travel better with Antietam World Travel Service, your gateway to worry-free journeys. They have an extensive network, unmatched experience, and personalized services. You can actually explore the whole world with confidence and ease. When you work with Antietam World Travel Service, you get convenience, experience, and connections. Go to AntietamTravel.com right now and get started on your dream vacation. All right, local resident Julie Maurer got inspiration from her dog and wrote a children's book, which you can purchase at the home of everything Frederick. Here is Julie. 
one North Market Street, which is the home of everything, Frederick, you can find great stuff by lots of different artisans, including my next guest. Julie Maurer is a an author who's written a children's book. Good morning, Julie. How are you? Hi. Good morning, Danny. I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for asking. So you are an author who's written a children's book recently. Tell me a little bit about how the idea came to you and uh, a little bit about the book. Okay. Well, I can show you the book first. It's called um, Ichiban Goes Hiking. Whoops, there we go. It's the first in a series of at least three. There may be more. The creative wheels kind of spin and there's possible other other upcoming books but it's definitely the first in a series of three um i've wanted to write a children's book for years but i never knew what i was going to write about and i didn't really know how i was going to illustrate it i mean i have a degree in graphic design but somehow illustrating a children's book just seemed kind of daunting and then with the introduction of ai i suddenly realized there was some potential here when I combined the AI with a whole lot of Photoshop to get the look that I wanted, I, I realized I could do the illustrations. And I still didn't know what I was going to write the book about. And then back in February sometime, I was just sitting after breakfast like I do every day, kind of meditating. And suddenly my first dog just started speaking in my head. She says, hi, my name is Ichiban. And I know it's a funny name, and but my mommy, human mommy gave it to me. And suddenly I realized I was going to be writing children's books about um, the adventures I had hiking with my first dog, Ichiban, in Colorado. Oh, very cool. What a great way to kind of receive that message and and to listen and and to be able to take that to maybe at least a three-part uh, book series. That's very, very good. So how do you, is this self-published? Do you have a publisher? How does that work? Yeah, for me, it's all self-published. It's, it's done on Amazon. Okay, okay. Yeah. When you self-publish, you go through a publisher where you pay to have it done and then you ship them to Amazon and when people order, they get them direct. Is that how that works? No, there's no money up front for me as far as the book itself. It's called Print on Demand and I do it through Amazon. Oh, gotcha, okay, yeah, so right. So I just load it onto Amazon and then as people order it, um, Amazon prints it. Wow, that's very cool. Very cool. Interesting. So uh, this book right now, Ichiban, uh, is about adventures you had in Colorado. Um, where do you see this series moving forward? And who's what's the appropriate age group for this book? I'd say it's up about three to eight. Um, I, I've read it to some kids and the six-year-old particularly really responded to it. He seems like a very good age for it. I mean, the younger ones I think can really enjoy it. I mean, the illustrations are are really beautiful. So see, there's like one with, with little, yeah. little kids. And so the younger ones can enjoy having it read to them. And yeah. the older kids can read it themselves. So it kind of spans a kind of a, a wide a wide range. Yeah, very good. I love the fact that you used AI to generate some ideas and maybe some initial um, sketches or, or illustrations. Um, did you find that that just really then kind of was a you were able to kind of get the picture in your head of what you wanted? It took a little while to develop to really to get kind of this dog as the look the look that I wanted. Yeah, we're mirror imaging here. Um, cause I'd ended up being like probably four or five dogs that I pulled off AI to, to bring that together, to, to make it work. Right. You know, ears from one dog, upper face from another, lower face from, you know, another eyes from another chest fur from another. It was a lot. That was the most time consuming part really of, of the first book was getting the look I wanted for the dog. But once I have that moving forward to the next books, that'll be a lot easier. Yeah. I mean, was it um, your plan as far as with writing the book itself? How long did it take to actually formulate the story? Oh, the story took about 30 minutes. Oh. <laughs> the story just poured out of me. 
Um, it, I mean, there was a little bit of editing over time. Obviously, sure. it wasn't just absolutely perfect from the get go. There was some minor revisions, but for the first book, the story was just came out so fast. It was the, it's the illustrations that are um, incredibly time consuming. Yeah, yeah. What is the biggest challenge when you're writing a book, a uh, children's book, or any other? I think keeping the languaging simple for kids. Because I am kind of a writer by nature. And if I write for adults, it's going to be a very different style, much more complicated words, uh, lots of different words. And so when I'm writing for kids, I want to make sure I keep, I keep the language very, very simple. But it seems like as I've been writing this, Ichiban was just kind of up here over my shoulder. And it was almost like I was sort of channeling her. And mm. she, you know, she's almost like speaking to me from the age of one of these young children. And so it was almost like she was guiding me into how to how to write it. Yeah. What kind of dog was she? A case hund. Okay. There, there's not a lot of case hunts in this area. I'm, there were quite a few of them when we lived in Colorado and I got it from a breeder in Wyoming. But since we moved back to this area and uh, I've been back here for 15 years and I think I've maybe seen one other yeah. case hunt. Yeah. And uh, what, uh, how was it like owning her as a dog? Like how long did you have her? I had her for 14 years. Um, yeah, I think if I got as much as I could out of her, because that's their normal lifespan. Um, she was wild, wonderful, headstrong. She was the perfect kind of dog to have out on the trail because she yeah. was fearless. Yeah, yeah. She really. just absolutely loved being outside and was absolutely into everything. My current dog is an American Eskimo. He's, he's Mr. Suburban creature who I've tried to take out in the wild and he cries if he steps on something he doesn't under, you know, doesn't know or gets a thorn caught in his fur. So he, he would have survived in Colorado. Right. Right. Well, I guess, you know, it, you were sent the dog you needed to have wherever you were at the time. At I that guess. time. Exactly. I wouldn't have wanted, I wouldn't have, I couldn't have handled Ichiban, I think here yeah. without the mountains yeah. to burn off. How, yeah. How long do you think it'll be before book two is released? Um, book two is, I can show you a quick preview of it. It's spiral. It's just in my little notebook at this point. Okay. It's, I'd say the interior is, it's completely written and the illustrations are maybe two thirds done. I want to get that out early December in time for Christmas. Oh, very good. That's excellent. Well, if there was one thing you'd want people to know about you as an author or the book for this uh, series, what would that be? Oh, gosh. One thing they want me to know. I think I'm just really excited to be putting these books out. It feels like it's um, kind of a culmination of so many pieces of my life finally coming coming together in this uh, in this one project. And I'm just really excited about getting the books out there and just, you know, seeing how it unfolds over time. Well, that is awesome. Well, we appreciate your time today. We'll make sure that the link uh, to Amazon is on the stream so people can order the book for themselves. Julie Maurer, we thank you so much for uh, stopping at Good Morning Frederick today. Yeah, thank you, Danny. I appreciate you very much uh, having me here. Oh, there we go. All right. Want to thank Julie for that. Coming up tomorrow, we got Jennifer from Artist Angle Gallery, Mike and Audie from Frederick Social, and we take a look back at the Frederick Floral Bar. Tell a friend about Good Morning Frederick. Have an amazing day. Happy Halloween. And get out there, have some fun trick or treating, and be great, Frederick. From downtown street to the Carroll Creek view. There's something special here to feel it. Good morning, Frederick. Rise and shine.